What's up guys, my name is Abdul Nafe and welcome back to another brand new video. Um, and in this one, we're going to be learning the basics of studio lighting inside of Blender 3D. I'm going to be teaching you how to make this lighting setup right here um, and how to sort of light up products inside of Blender 3D. Um, so I think we should get started. Um, now, this scene was basically, uh, I made a course recently in which I learned, uh, I taught you guys how to um, make product animations in Blender 3D. Um, and we made this scene in that course. So if you want to check that course out, you can check it out. The link is going to be in the description. Um, but in this uh, video, we're just going to be covering the lighting of this scene uh, i'm not going to be teaching you how to make this scene from scratch but it was just it wasn't that hard it was just we just imported a model in blender and then we just did some texturing and this is how we look so this is the lighting setup um you can see that i, I have um a dual viewport setup right here if you don't have this um what you can do is you can um actually let me just first close this so that i can then show you guys how to create it um and you're going to see that you're just going to have one um what do you call it viewport so you can just right click right here like somewhere right here and you can click vertical split and so you can just just basically set uh set it to be whatever point you want it to be and then you're going to have uh two viewports in your scene so one one viewport i'll usually like to set it to the camera so i can see the final result um and the second one i can just sort of play around with and uh in this one i usually like to have all my viewport guides on as well and this one i'd like to turn off everything um just so i can sort of see um, how the final result is going to look right and the lighting and everything i change uh I change the position uh, and the rotation and everything of the lights in this viewport, right? So I'm going to go ahead and delete all the lights. Although you can see a basic lighting setup, but we're going to be doing this from scratch. I'm just going to go ahead and delete all these lights so we can create them from scratch. Instead of deleting them, how about I just um, make a new collection? One sec, right click, new collection, and then select, my bad, uh, select all the lights and just drop them into the collection and we can just disable this like that so now if i click rendered view um you're going to see that it's completely dark uh, if it's not completely dark for you what you can do is you can just go ahead and go to your uh, word properties and here you can set the color to be completely black by default it's going to be something like a gray um and that's uh, how it's going to look by default but i would recommend you to just to set it to black so you can so you have complete control over the lighting and you don't get any lighting by default um, so let's go ahead and add our first light. So I'm just going to go ahead and click add right here and we can add light. And I'm just, I usually like to add area lights um, almost exclusively in pretty much all my projects. Um, I rarely use any point lights or any of the other, these other lights. I mostly just use area lights, especially when I'm doing uh, product, what do you call it, product uh, renders. So with the light added, I'm just going to be pressing G on my keyboard to basically move it and Z on my keyboard to basically um, change it, uh, sorry, um, constrain it to the Z axis only, right? And so you're going to see that we have this light right here on the top and it's lighting some parts uh, of, of the object, but I'm going to be placing it. Uh, so I'm going to go to the top view. I'm going to be scaling up the light a little bit and placing it right here, somewhere right here. So you can light up the top parts, okay? If I place it somewhere there, you're going to see that it's going to light, light up more of the top part and also some of the back parts as well. So that's going to be a good um, position for the light. Now, one problem which we're noticing right now is that the power of this light is pretty less. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to something like 100. 100 might be a little too much. So how about we set it to something like 80? 80. 80 might be good. And so now it's just, uh, uh, it's just a matter of duplicating the light and basically placing it in positions where you think it's going gonna, it's gonna to look good, right? So let's go to the side view. And I'm going to press Shift D with the light selected to basically duplicate the light and press Z to move it in the Z axis like that. Move it right there. And now you're going to see that the light is actually facing downwards. So I'm going to press R and Y on my keyboard to basically rotate it in the Y axis. If you want to rotate your lights or any objects to a specific angle, you just have to type that angle in on your keyboard. So I'm just going to type 180 degrees uh, on my keyboard and press Enter. So you're going to see that it's rotated 180 degrees now. And now you can press G and shift Z to basically move it in the X and Y axis to move it to a position where you think it kind of looks good. So you have two options basically. The first option is gonna be uh, to basically light up the front part of the watch more. The second option is gonna be to light up the back part of the watch more. I think with this light, the back part looks pretty good the contour here and like the highlights here are look pre looking pretty decent. So I'm just gonna do that. Um, you might notice one thing is which is that i'm actually adding the fill lights and the rim lights before i'm adding the key light that's something i'm doing on purpose usually i like to go with um usually i like to add the rim lights and the key and the fill lights first and after that at the end i usually add my key light so i think it's just uh it's just a workflow which i prefer 
you can obviously go for something else if you want but that's just something i prefer so let's talk a little bit about the purpose of our lighting the purpose of our lighting is to basically differentiate our object from the background right and i'm going to see that the top part is for the most part it's differentiated the bottom part is also differentiated except for this little part right here so if i zoom in you're going to see this part right here is not differentiated you can't really tell where uh, the object ends and the background starts and this part is completely not differentiated and this part you can't even see um, so that's some uh, that's something we're going to be uh, needing to work on next next problem which i'm going to be solving um, before we come to the front side i'm just going to be solving the problem of the back side to make the back side uh, more pronounced and differentiate it from the background so i'm just going to be with the light selected i'm going to press uh, shift d on my keyboard again and press x to move in the x axis move it back like that and then I can just rotate it in the y-axis, something like negative 80 degrees, or actually negative 90 degrees. And then we can move it up, GZ, like that, and basically move this light to a point where it is lighting up the back part of this watch. And I'm also going to have to increase the scale of this light, uh, and that I can do by pressing S on my keyboard to scale up, and then Z on my keyboard to just scale it up in the Z-axis, just like that. And we can also scale it down in the y-axis a little bit, just so we can have a little bit of harsh lighting. Um, and one important thing about lighting, which, I, uh, which I'm assuming you guys already know, but if you don't know, um, the way lighting works in Blender and in real life as well is um, basically the smaller or the narrower your light source is, the harsher your shadows are gonna be. So for example, if I increase the scale of this in let's say the Y axis a lot, you're gonna see that the shadows are gonna become very soft and they're not gonna have that much contrast, right? As opposed to where uh, when I reduce um, the, what do you call it, the width, you can see that the shadows are gonna be much harder. Like I want you to focus on this point right here. You can see the shadows are pretty hard, harsh. If I scale it up, you're gonna see that the shadows are gonna become pretty soft. And in this scenario, um, and also there's no one um, rule which uh, is applicable to all situations. It really depends on what sort of render you're trying to make. Um, but in this situation, I think I prefer soft shadows over harsh shadows. So I'm just gonna go for that. Yeah, I think something a little softer would look good. But um, again, this really depends on what sort of render you're trying to make. And it's going to vary based on your personal preference and also the vibe of the render that you're going for. So I think that should be a good uh, rim light. All right. Perfect. Keep saving your project, by the way, if you're following along, because I don't want you to lose any progress. Um, and after that, what I'm going to do is let's move on to the key light next. Um, so for that, I'm just going to be duplicating. I'm just going to select one of these lights, press Shift D and duplicate it move it right there and what we can do is we can press r and y again and just rotate it 90 degrees something like that gz to move it up and now we can just go to the top view and sort of position this light according to what we want now what some beginners would might do is they might place um so here you can see that we have a camera right here what a lot of beginners might want to do is they might want to just take this light and put it right in front of the camera and just um light it like that which i think is going to look pretty bad um, oftentimes you want to use shadows to your advantage the more shadows you have in your image the more um depth you're going to create and the better your image is going to look so in this situation i'm going to be adding this light right here somewhere right here so you can see that we can see some reflections on the hands of the watch and also some shadows on this side as well right which we are going to be filling in in just a bit but um you get the idea right and again the size of the light you can basically mess around with this if you increase it, that's how it looks. And if you decrease it, that's how it looks. I think I'm going to go with something like this. But then I'm going to decrease the size in the x-axis a little bit. Something like that. And then maybe change the position. And place the light somewhere like that. I think I think that part, that reflection, which uh, so the, the highlight on the watch is it's looking pretty good. But yeah. So after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the light once again. And I can just place this one right here and I can use it to sort of fill in the shadows, right? But again, the shadows are being filled in a little too much right now. That's not what I want. I do want there to be like a little bit of, uh, what do you call it? I want the lighting to be a little moody and I want it to have some shadows. So that's why I'm going to reduce the power of this to something like 40. Yeah, 40 might be good. And then... Uh, Right now, I think we are looking pretty decent. The only problem which I'm noticing right now is that this part is a little too dark and maybe, actually, the top part is, is, is looking pretty good. The only problem is that this part is sort of looking a little too dark. Also, one quick little tip for you guys. If you want to check which parts um, of your image are too dark or too bright, what you can do is you can just go to your render properties 
go down to um, your color management and then go to view transform and just change this to false color. And here you're going to see that your image is going to be transformed into something uh, like the colors are going to be transformed. And so here what you can see is that the color gray, wherever you find gray, for example, this gray right here, this is perfect exposure, right? If you find red or orange, that is overexposed. And if you find blue, that is underexposed. So oftentimes, whenever you have a little bit of gray or a little bit of um, yellow or orange in your scene, that means you are doing pretty good. If you have a lot of blue in your scene, like for example, we have a lot of blue right here, that means those parts are a little underexposed and you should add some more lights, right? Um, so yeah, but for the most part, we're looking pretty good because we have some green in our scene, so we should be good for the most part, but this part needs a little more lighting. Change it back to AGX and now what we can do is we can just simply go ahead and duplicate one of these lights shift d and move it right here just to add a little more lighting in the bottom um but again this is it's made it's it's a little too bright so let me place it properly first um also this highlight i think looks pretty good but if you want to if you want to basically remove it then you can change it to a position move it to a position where it's less visible but one thing which I am going to do is I'm going to reduce the power again of this to something like 40. I think that looks decent. I want to change the position a little bit just to see how it looks in different positions. I think that looks pretty good. I think that is looking pretty decent. And so far, I am pretty satisfied with the lighting, with the look that we're getting. Um, Again, all uh, all lighting is subjective. My job here is just to show you guys like the basic fundamentals of lighting and sort of um, some basic techniques. Obviously, you might not think that this lighting setup looks good and you can feel completely free to think that way. And so you, uh, I would recommend you to actually make changes to your own um, render and try to make it look even better, right? So anyway, I think that is looking pretty decent. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to see what we can improve. You could add some other lights to basically highlight this part as well. Um, so let me try to do that. Basically add another rim light. So duplicate this rim light. Um, Shift Z and place it right there. Change the, change the um, rotation and then scale it down in the X axis a little bit. Or Y axis. And then you can bring it closer. Okay, in this case, it's not really doing a lot. So I might want to, I might want to change the position. Or maybe I want to, I might want to place it right here and rotate it. Hmm. Yeah, I honestly don't like the way this looks. So I'm just going to re remove that. But yeah, I think we are looking pretty decent with this uh, render. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you learned something new. And this is how you make a basic lighting setup. Um, by the way, some key fundamentals for you guys. So this main light, which is lighting the main part of your um, of, your, of your object. So if I just basically remove this, you can see that the main part is very underexposed and it's not looking that good. Um, this is called the key light, right? All these lights, this one, this one, this one, and this one, these are called the fill light. So if I just turn these off, you're going to see that. My bad. Um, the main part is highlighted, but obviously all the dark parts are way too dark and they are uh, basically the shadows are way too intense right so to in order to reduce the intensity of shadows you add fill lights and lastly this light right here this one at the back this is called a rim light so it's called a three-point lighting setup usually it involves three lights but in this uh, scene we have a lot more than three lights uh, but the basic fundamentals fundamentals are the same but yeah that's uh, the basics of lighting for you guys in blender and i'll see you in the next one thank you for watching goodbye also, guys, if you're interested in taking your product visualization game to the next level, then this course, which I recently made, is perfect for you. Um, because in this course, we're going to be learning um, how to make basically these three renders right here and one animation as well. Uh, so I'm just going to be showing you in just a bit. So firstly, we're going to be making this render right here of a perfume bottle. Um, we're also going to be making this animation of the perfume bottle as well. Um, so all of it is going to be completely covered from scratch. We're going to be doing everything inside of Blender 3D. Um, and also, we're going to be making this... Uh, what do you call it this perfume render um it's a it's basically a product render which is and it's something which is in demand right now a lot of companies reach out to me and they're like please um we're we're starting um a perfume company a watch company whatever um please make an animation for our product so um something like this is going to get you a lot of clients so i would definitely recommend you to take this course and also we're going to be making a whole animation of the watch which we just worked on right now um so yeah
if you want to take your product visualization game to the next level, then this course is definitely perfect for you. I'm going to be very honest. This is probably one of the best courses that I've made so far. Um, and it is going to be very, very helpful for you guys if you're interested in um, Blender. And also as a bonus, we're also going to be making this MacBook render right here. So if you're into tech products and if you want to make um, sort of uh, animation videos for tech companies, then this is something which you should definitely consider. Um, this whole animation will be made in Blender. And yeah, overall, this course is a lot of fun you're going to learn a lot of things and um yeah that's pretty much it for this one um i really hope you guys consider buying the course and i'll see you in the next one goodbye